Hi everyone. How are you? Uh, my name is Vedran, and today I'll be talking about becoming a Swift developer. So first of all, please raise your hands if you're frequently using Swift in your projects. How many of you? <laughs> Enough. Uh, so okay, this is basically a beginner level talk, and I'll give you a few guidelines how to start with Swift style development. So this is the path to become a Swift, Swift developer. So basically, if you uh, you're interested in IS development, you will you should learn Swift and IS SDK fundamentals. Then you should probably practice an experiment, build your own app, and probably apply for a job. So let's go step by step. Be passionate about IS development. So you probably can become great in your field if you're not passionate about it. So why did I write that? Well, basically, I think it's the most important thing if you like what you do. Uh, most of you started programming not because you had to, but because it was interesting, it was challenging, and it gave you some sense of accomplishment. So if you really like what you do, I don't think there, there will be a problem to learn new programming, programming languages like Swift. Uh, second step would be learn Swift and ISSDK. And if you just started with iOS development, you probably asked yourself if you should start with Objective-C or Swift. Uh, Objective-C is 33 years old. It's quite some time here. And Swift is only two years old, but since version 2.0, it's be it became quite stable and it can be used in production. So my answer would be to start with Swift. Uh, Swift is gaining a lot of popularity each day, and it seems that Apple, is, Apple focuses on it, and it should become a future for iOS development. So, uh, if you're just starting with iOS development, uh, you should start with uh, Swift. Basically, iOS community in general start, uh, started to write new blog posts, videos, and books in Swift, so basically it indicates that uh, other developers think as well that it's stable enough to use it in production. Okay, so here are a few recommendations for books. Uh, I really recommend The Big Nerd Range Guide, uh, Swift Programming and iOS Programming. First one will give you a basic syntax, it will teach you basic syntax of Swift, and after that one you should probably move to iOS Programming which will cover uh, details like UIKit framework and how to use it with Swift. The third book, The Swift Programming Language, is an official book by Apple, and it covers in depth every feature Swift contains, and if you read it, you'll see why Swift is so powerful. If you don't like books, there are also videos. One of the most popular ones is developing IS apps with Swift. This is by Stanford University and it became available a few weeks ago. Also, there is Ray Vanderlich. This is probably the most popular site with iOS tutorials. And oh, it also gives Swift courses from beginner level to more intermediate and advanced ones. Third link is WWDC. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. And it's held each year, and on it, uh, Apple developers give talks about certain topics in iOS SDK. It's more advanced level, but you should definitely see it when you come to beginner level. Also, there are online courses like Code School. The cool thing about it is that you don't have to have an OSX or Xcode. You can try Swift directly in your web browser, and it will also cover basic stuff like UIKit animation, score data using Swift. If that's, not, if that's not enough for you, there's also Advanced Swift by Objective-C IO. So if you read Apple's official book, this is the next one you should read. It covers advanced topics in Swift, high-level topics like protocols and generics, and low-level ones like string internals or wrapping the C library. But I think it's still a good idea to learn fundamentals of Objective-C. Why? Well, if you want to become a professionalized developer, 
it's highly unlikely that you'll only write a script. It is highly likely that you'll stumble upon some Objective-C legacy code that you'll have to maintain. But that's not the only reason. There are tons of learning materials also available on online regarding IOS SDK written in Objective-C. There are a lot of code examples in form of blog posts, videos, or books. There are thousands of GitHub repositories which you can use as a library in your, own, in your own project. And if you have an advanced question regarding IS SDK, it's highly likely that you will find an answer for it written in Objective-C. Okay, so after you read all of those books, you should practice and experiment. And that means firing up your Xcode. I think the best way to learn a new programming language is to actually code in it. So uh, just reading about programming doesn't mean you'll learn it. You'll actually have to sit down and practice. You can do it in Xcode Playgrounds, or you can do it in example Xcode projects. For those of you who know, don't know what Xcode Playground is, it's basically an interactive file which compiles Swift and updates automatically what you write. Uh, it's also a good idea to read blog posts and watch videos. Uh, iOS community, like I said, generally moved to Swift and there are a lot of interesting topics by other developers to learn about. Uh, and you'll learn a lot by reading solutions which other developers have problems, problems with other pro problems with. Okay, so here are a few recommendations. First is Objective CIO. It's basically for most advanced topics on Swift. There is Realm, which is, if you know, a database replacement framework, similar to Core Data, but their team organizes uh, IS talks once a week regarding Swift and IS um, topics. The third link, that thing in Swift, covers well, it basically has a lot of code examples written in Swift, and if you don't know how to write something in Swift, you'll probably find it there. Also, Natasha the Robot, Erika Sedun, and Bart Jacobs, they're all passionate Swift developers, and they write multiple times a week regarding uh, problems they found and how, how they solved it in Swift. Those two last links, they're basically the holy grail of Swift and IS education. You, you'll find probably hundreds of links to tutorials, other libraries, and etc. And of course, like I mentioned for the books, you should probably try everything you read about so it will stick more. After that, I think it would be a good idea to build your own app. Uh, it doesn't have to be a complex app, it should be a really simple one just to try out things like network and code database, and just try, just try out Swift. It's, it's not about the app, it's about learning. So when you'll actually write an app, you'll stumble upon a lot of problems, which you'll eventually solve. And after that, it will be much easier to solve a similar problem in the future. And optionally, but I think it's a good idea that you'll apply for a job. It can be a scary thought if you're even experienced developer that there are better developers than you. But that's actually a good thing because you can use their knowledge to extend yours and I think that is the, by far the most quickest way to become a great Swift developer. And that would be all. Thanks for listening. <laughs>
Thank you.